Oh, sure. And titles, titles for books can be very long, right? For film, they're short, right? Like, if you can make it one word, that's great. <laughs> so, right? Um, you know, or, or, or two or three. But the thing is, you want to keep it short, very concise. So if you go on IMDb and you have a title that you're working on for your book, you type it in the search bar. And if there's a movie that comes up with that title, I would suggest pick a different title and find a title. Yeah, because if you want the movie to have the same title, you need to reserve that title. So if you do come up with a title that when you search for it, it's no longer, it, it's not being used, you want to create your IMDb account and you want to request that title and you can reserve that title and just put that your project is in development. Okay, because the development stage is where you're working on the script. And so even if you're just working on the book and you're not working on the script yet, if you reserve your title, then you know you will have that title available when you're ready to start working on your screenplay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. Glad to have everyone back. We have a guest today who is somewhere very, very warm right now, um, originally from my part of the world, but now somewhere completely different. Uh, Jacqueline's with me today. We're going to be talking about an amazing thing about maybe if you have a great book and you're saying, Dave, I would love to see my book become a movie. And I have zero idea how this happens. Well, you're in luck. I have the expert here. Jacqueline's going to help you unpack all that and understand that. Jacqueline, welcome to the podcast. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Yeah. So tell everybody where you are, where it's warm. I was originally from, like, I grew up in a small town on uh, the West Coast on Vancouver Island. And then I lived in the Vancouver area for most of my adult years. And now I'm in Mexico and it's hot. <laughs> oh, man. That's a big difference. That's a really big difference. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Actually, I'd never even been to Mexico when my husband and I decided, uh, let's move there. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so what's one of the first things you had to uh, adjust to besides the heat? Um, well, you know, I did know, I did speak a good amount of Spanish. I'd say probably 60% fluent before we came. But still, like, it, that, that was a lot to adjust to. It just, it was all the time. Like, it's one thing when, you know, I know a good amount of Spanish and I can go talk to someone, you know, and have a conversation here and there. But now it's like... That's the only language I get to use. And so after the third month, my brain was kind of exhausted. And um, yeah, it it took a while to kind of get over that hump to just accept the fact that I speak Spanish every day now. <laughs> it's just okay. the way. So I'm going to put you on the spot because I have Spanish listeners um, that are listening today and they will not expect this. But did you want to just say hello to our Spanish listeners? Because this will blow them away. To have oh, okay. you say this and greet greet them as well. Sí, por seguro, como no. <laughs> me llamo Jack, ma, me llamo Jacqueline. Um, bienvenidos. Quiero explicar muchas cosas hoy. Gracias. <laughs> See, there you go. Now everyone is like, wait, rewind. What was that? What did you? Hey. Say? That's awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. I love I love having people come on that can that can just do that. That's that makes me very very happy. Um, okay, so tell us. A little bit. I have your website up as we're chatting. Talk a little bit about your website. Let's start there because it's okay. a great starting point. But uh, tell everybody what you do. Okay. So Family Friendly Screenwriting Academy is uh, a program that my husband and I actually recently launched. And the whole purpose is to help screenwriters, well, people who want to be screenwriters and people who already are, to advance in the whole process, wherever they're at. Uh, so some of our students had never seen a script before they came to us. And uh, some of the people that have already gone through some of our programs are professional writers. So we have something for everyone, literally. Like we have teens. Our youngest student right now is 14 and he is totally crushing it. He's in the adult class and he is like amazing. So wow. yeah, I always think screenwriting is for everyone. If you have an imagination, if you love dialogue and you're willing to stretch yourself, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's amazing. 14. Mm -hmm. Wow. I can't even, I don't even remember what I did at 14, but it wasn't <laughs> writing a screenwriting thing. Of course that was, wow, that's amazing. So, so I, I get a lot of people coming through Jacqueline and they, they write some amazing books 
and they're mm-hmm. like i can see i can see the movie as i'm writing or my characters like they come out of the book and they talk to me as mm-hmm. i'm writing and i can just see this and my dream would be to see this on on a big screen someday and see my my book come to life is this kind of what you guys do? Do you help authors kind of bring their their dreams to life? Uh, yes, actually, I'm in the process of putting together an entire program for that. It's okay. going to be starting in September. It's a 10 month program that takes an author like a, somebody who's already a published author. It's only for authors for this particular program. Um, so we're going to be taking them through the process of how to develop their story that's in the book to develop in a way that's going to fit the screen because it doesn't always translate. And so you have to figure out how to make that translate. Uh, And so let me just um, back up for a second. Have you ever read a book and then you've gone to the theater and watched the Mm. movie and you're like, what? Mm. What was that? That was not the book at all. They missed missed this. They missed this. Yeah. 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 And not even just missing it. Like sometimes just missing the point. Yeah. like not just a few storylines or characters, but it's like, I don't even know what that story was about anymore, you know? Right. So the, that, the thing is that there is actually a reason why stuff gets taken out. And it's very logical if you think about it. How long would it take to actually read your book? So if you were to actually get your book made into an audio book, 10,000 words equals about one hour of finished audiobook time. Okay. Okay, so if you have 10,000 words in your book, then okay, that's one hour. But if you have 80,000, that's going to be like eight hours. Yeah. How are you supposed to fit that story into a one and a half to two hour screenplay, mm-hmm. right? To be able right. to watch the movie. Um, so it's one of the things is literally you have to narrow down the story in order for it to fit for the time frame that you're working with. The other thing is every character that you add in a screenplay adds to the budget. And so a lot of times you'll find that characters from the books will be combined. Or, right. you know, maybe instead of the character having four siblings, they'll have one. You know, like it just it has to be it has to be brought down. It would just be so expensive if you have too many characters. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the things. And then obviously, if you are going to be having to narrow your story down, that means you're going to be pulling out different storylines. That's just that's just the logic of how it works. Like you can't get around it. So mathematically, it makes sense. That totally makes sense that you can't have an eight hour movie. That would be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. OK. Um, so. Is there anything for maybe a new author that's in the process of writing with the end goal that they would like a a movie possibly in the future? Before I start my journey of writing my book, is there anything they should kind of keep in mind as they build out their book with maybe the end goal of a movie? Sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, There's actually one really, really important factor that is the difference between books and movies, which is... In books, you can actually get inside someone's head. You can also reference something that this happens because of that. Or, you know, you can say those kinds of things in a book. In a movie, you can't. Everything needs to be um, presented either visually or audibly. That's it. You cannot just know something. You have to see it. It's all objective. So as you're writing your book, if you're thinking, can I show this? Right? Like, because... One of the things that I would ask an author, because I do get asked quite often, like, how can I turn my book into a movie? Um, I have to let them know, like, is your book able to be shown on a screen where all you could do is watch it and listen to it? And can you understand the story that way? Or is it one where you actually are inside someone's head or multiple people's heads where how are you supposed to know stuff unless you read it? Do you know what I mean? Right. So it's, yeah. I know in, in auth, like books, like they have show, don't tell as yeah. you know, but in screenwriting, it's like that on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> you really have to show it. You can't tell it. Um, it's, it's poor writing if you tell it and, and an author would understand that. Amazing. So to work with you guys, 
do we have to have a book to to come and work with you or is there different ways that people are coming to be a part of a family-friendly screenwriting academy Okay, well, we do have that one program that that I was mentioning. That one is specifically for published authors, but we have other programs as well. Uh, We have a Screenwriting Foundations class, which is just, it's a seven-week kind of crash course, but it's going to take you through the process of developing your story into an idea that and a framework that will work for screen. So you'll have your whole story plotted out and you'll get started on writing it And that all happens in seven weeks. So that's why I say it's a bit of a crash course. It can be quite intense at times. Um, But it's perfect for people that have, um, maybe they've just been wondering, is this something I'm interested in? Because it's not a huge commitment. It's seven weeks. Uh, So people that just want to dip their toe totally works. Um, Or if they want to get started and they just need someone to send them off on the right track, perfect for that. Or actually, I have a screenwriter in the class who. He's actually written a few scripts before, but he didn't understand why it didn't seem to be getting any traction in uh, any competitions or whatever. And so he he was like, well, I guess I want to take the foundations, see where I'm missing something. And then he realized within the first class, he knows what he needs to work on already. So so, yeah, it's perfect to make sure that you have the foundations. That's why it's called foundations. Thanks. And this is available globally then? Like we can do this online? Okay. Yeah, all the classes are live online Zoom classes, and we record them and um, have them available for the students during the whole course um, and then for a few weeks afterward for anybody that missed a class and needs to catch up. Uh, We have actually on our website, we have groups so that you can be part of the group, whatever class that you're in. So you can ask questions there. You can... um, like even a log line, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically, it's a one to two sentence um, enticing phrase to be able to explain what your movie is about without giving away the ending. And mm. it wants, you want to entice people to want to read your story, right? right? And so people can post their log lines and get feedback on it so that, you know, it kind of is a group effort, everybody working together, giving each other um, feedback on their ideas and maybe try this and maybe try that. And which is very helpful to be able to, you know, get ahead. And that's one of the things actually that we really wanted to do with Family Friendly Screenwriting Academy is to bring people together so that we can grow faster together. Because it seems to be one of the, it's an industry where there's a lot of introverts, for one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're kind of spread out. And and so it, there seems to be a bit of a mystery in some regards to how do you go about doing this? How do you break into the industry? How do you, let's say I know how to write a screenplay. Well, what do I do with that knowledge? What do I do with that ability? How do I break in, right? So mm-hmm. that's what we want to do is provide the entire process, not just the learning and educational part of it, but um, we're going to be establishing a pitch festival so that when writers have their solid script and they're ready, they go through the pitch ready program and then they get to go to the festival. And then that way we have like a spirit of excellence in everything that we do. We always want to bring our best. Nice. Okay. Now let's uh, narrow in on the name of your, your business. Tell me how important the family friendly part of this is in the big scope of what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, the family friendly is not just that we want to teach people how to write family friendly films. We want the entire process to be family friendly. So as a screenwriter myself, I've taken a lot of courses and classes from, you know, other writers and programs and whatever. And I'm always assigned to watch something that is outside of my own uh, belief or, you know, like just my own standards that I have for myself, like stuff I would never watch. And why do I have to watch the stuff I would never watch so that I can write the stuff that I would watch? And to me, it just didn't make sense. Like there's gotta be movies out there that are great that are not going to be something that you have to like watch behind closed doors with a, you know, the clicker in your hand, right. (laughs) To skip certain scenes. Right. Um, so yeah, we've designed this entire program and also to include the faith-based, um, audience, cause that is an ever growing, um, part of the industry, right? Like that entire genre is just like, it is busting wide open right now. 
Um, and so we've created a safe place for people that just love to write. They want to learn and they just they want to do it from a family friendly perspective. So you could have your child in the room while you're taking the classes while you're doing your homework, you can right. even actually like it's family movies most of the time that are assigned. And so you could even watch it with your family in the room. So you're doing your homework and you're not missing family time. Amazing. OK, so any success stories that you can share with us? Any um, people that have kind of been working with you and something great has happened as they've kind of worked through the process? Well, we launched in January, so we are okay. still new. You're still new, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. However, we have been getting a lot of feedback from the writers saying that mm. they have learned a lot. And one of the programs that we do is actually called a peer review festival, where screenwriters, once they have at least their first draft done, whichever draft they're on, they can submit it to the festival. And they do it with the agreement that they're going to read and review three other screenplays. And then they get three back from other and so everybody ends up with three different uh, feedback forms that they've received about their screenplay. And then that will help them to go into a rewrite. And so normally, in order to get feedback on your script, it, it's going to cost like $150 to get that from, uh, you know, a professional just for one. And but with our uh, with our peer review festival, it's like $50 and you get three. And it's going to be from someone in your peer category because we have beginners, intermediate and professional. So, you know, the professionals aren't going to be getting peer reviewed by the beginners. Right. Right. Um, so what was amazing, even for myself, because I put my own script in the um, in the, the professional category. And I was so thankful because this particular script I put in there, I knew something wasn't working and I could not figure out where. And this guy gave me feedback and he explained like, oh, yeah, in act one, you need to set this up better. And then that'll make everything happen in act three, make way more sense. And and I was just like, oh, yes, obviously, it's all in act one. I missed it all. Mm, <laughs> so then I was able to go back and do a rewrite and I fixed it all. And that's the kind of feedback we're getting from the other writers as well, is that the feedback they got was so valuable and they were able to rewrite going in with way more knowledge. Awesome. And and this is beyond movies as well. It also encompasses like television. Is that right? Yes. Uh, at the moment, we don't have classes for okay. television. However, the, the Screenwriting Foundations class, um, it's the same. It's actually the same structure to write a movie as it is to write a pilot. Okay. So I do have some of my students writing pilots okay. in that particular class. So if if that is something that you're interested in, this Screenwriting Foundations class covers both. Okay. Amazing. So back to our author audience then, um, from your perspective, with your expertise, any kind of guidance for someone that is finished, their book is out in the world, they're promoting it, and uh, maybe they haven't really considered the idea of of pursuing it as a as a, a movie or a television show, however that's going to translate. Any any kinds of words of wisdom for somebody in that situation? How can they benefit from getting their book onto the screen? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's actually two really interesting um, things that they may not realize. If they have a large following with their book, getting it made into a movie is easier than me just presenting a spec script to a producer. Mm. The reason is they already have an audience. So oh. if you have a built-in audience and your intellectual property is already proven that you have the audience, right? that actually really helps the process. So then the other thing that they need to keep in mind is credit. Okay, if you take that... Um, and you go pitch your book to a producer saying, look, I have all of these uh, readers. I've sold all these books. I've got this huge following. You know, they love any updates of whatever I'm doing. And. OK, here's what's going to happen. They're going to say either they'll say, oh, it's not for me, but let's say they decide that they want to do it. They're going to say, OK, great. I'll put a writer on it. And so then you're out of the picture. You get to have your story by credit. 
but somebody else is going to take the screenplay by credit and that splits 50 50. Mm. Okay. And depending on how much has changed in the story in order to make it work for screen, that screenwriter might also end up taking part of the story by credit because they've had to rework some things. So if, and you totally can do this because, you know, let's say even if the the worst that you could get is 25%, let's say 25% is better than zero, right? If you, if you really want to break into the movies, I'm not saying don't do it. What I'm saying is understand what you would be getting into. Yeah. Okay. Because it would be quite a shock to realize like, wait a minute, my credit is cut down like 75%. What? Mm, right. <laughs> Just know that going in that it could go to that degree. Yeah. Like I wrote the book. Like Exactly. You know, like, all that work that you put in, all that grueling hours of trying yeah. to figure out, you know, like what's the character arc and all of that, yeah. right? All of that work. Um, but here's what you could do instead. If you learned how to write the screenplay yourself, which is not as complicated as it might appear initially, but if you wrote it yourself, then you would maintain that credit. Okay. And depending on what type of budget that your uh, screenplay would end up requiring, like, and, and also the amount of money that uh, an investor would be willing to put into it, knowing what they could get back from it. If it's going to be like a really, really big, amazing thing, like the princess bride. um, Hey, I love it. (laughs) Me too. Like that's huge. Right. Okay. So for that movie, you would be able, even if you only had 25% credit, you'd still make a decent amount of money on it, right? Right. Uh, Chances are. (laughs) But what if you actually maintained all of the credit? Then that's amazing. And which is actually what happened in The Princess Bride. Mm. Um, the, The writer who wrote the book, he also wrote the screenplay. And I think, because I've read both, I think that the fact that it was the same writer actually made a difference because the essence of the story, it feels the same. It really does feel the same. And so he was able to portray the story both in the book and on the screen where you would not be dissatisfied. Mm. Like it plays out exactly how you would imagine it. Nice. So yeah, yeah. And so I do think that for writers who write their own screenplay, maintaining that creative control because that's the other thing i didn't get into if you hire another screenwriter you lose your creative control because it's no longer your project it's theirs right yeah so if you maintain the creative control then you're able to keep that essence of the story so that you can choose which characters are going to get combined which storylines are going to get cut out because if you're thinking okay the core story is this then you can make it work so that you stay with that core story. And then that way the audience, you know, they might be able to recognize like, oh, they didn't get into that. Well, I guess they didn't have time. It won't be as disappointing as where they'd be like, I don't even, I don't recognize the movie. It's so different from, right? Right. Keeping that essence will allow them to, to feel that connection knowing, yeah, they portrayed it as, you know, as much as you possibly can, (laughs) if you have to cut it down, especially if it's a lot. Um, but yeah, like the, um, the hunger games, it's the same thing. Like people have said that the books and the movies and same with Harry Potter, right? Like oh, yeah. the books and the movies, they, they work. You're yeah. not going to go to the movie and be like, well, that's not what the book said. Yeah. You know, right. like there might be a few details here and there that are going to play out differently, but, um, the essence is there. And I guess as an author, too, they might even change, like, the title of the movie wouldn't even reflect yeah. the title of the book. That right? happens. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you see sometimes you see based on a book by or inspired by a book from, you'll see that in the credits, right? And they're like, yeah. oh, okay, so it's not like the book as a movie, but it inspired the movie or something. Right. Like that, right? Yes, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's why um, if you do have a large following – that would probably help to maintain the title also. Okay. So, yeah, if you do want your book to become a movie in the future, and that's your goal, build up your audience, do whatever you can to to kind of have that support group and cheerleaders in your corner as you're doing this, right? So that you can show 
uh, down the road, that you do have an active community around you and leverage that community and Mm -hmm. take your community on the journey of, you know, once maybe you are green lit to have your, your book turned into a movie, then take your audience through the journey of, of this thing coming to life, bring them along. Cause when that movie comes out, they'll be there waiting to support you and do that. Oh yeah. And all your super fans, all your super fans are going to go out there and tell all their friends like, Oh, I read the book. It's amazing. And maybe their friends aren't the kind of people that like to read books, but they'll be like, well, if it's a good story, if you say so, sure. I'll see the movie. Yeah. That's what you need. (laughs) So I know in the author world, we can do our whole self publishing thing and you don't have to go through the traditional methods of getting your book into the world. We can do it ourselves. Is there a do-it-yourself type approach in getting a movie done? Because I, I know there's costs, like yeah, crazy yeah, costs. That, but... That's a really, really good point. Okay, one of the differences with books and film is that with a book, it can be a very independent, you know, kind of process. You can do the whole thing yourself. Film is very much a group effort. Like if you think about how many people are on set even if there's only two people in this scene, there are so many people on set just to film it, okay? It's not just your director and the actors. You've got people who are working sound, people working lighting, people who are, you know, um, catering because they always feed actors and, and uh, crew on yeah. set. Right? And so you've got all of these people for every single scene, which is why it's expensive, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it is very much a group effort. So in order to have it made, unless you also are a production yeah. team, like if you right. are a producer and you can pull together this team, it's it's really not something you can do alone is the okay. point. Yeah. You can't just grab a camera and, and have some actors come in and just be like, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not going to work out well for you and it won't get distributed because yeah. that's the other part of it, too. It's not just being able to make the movie. You have to get it out there for people to see it, which means you have to get it past distribution. You can't publish it. I mean, I guess you could put it on YouTube. That could be self-publishing. But not as many people are going to find it as if you have it distributed on different streaming platforms. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good that you open the door to there. What um, do you have any thoughts around going with the big theaters with the popcorn and the sticky floors compared to going through like a streaming service like a netflix or a prime Mm -hmm. or whatever um is there is there an easier path for an author or a screenwriter to get their first movie out so it's going to come down to a couple things one of them is budget yeah and so within that part of it is how many known actors can you have if you can have at least one known actor that can draw the audience that doesn't already know you and your story and, you know, doesn't already want to watch it regardless of who's in it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You, Cause you have to expand that audience. Right. And so if you have enough of a budget where you know that you're going to pack the theaters, if you know, you have that, you can go for the theatrical release and you can make your money back. However, most people, especially when they're starting out work with independent production teams and, they might be able to get one known face, but like that known face might be somebody from a made for television movie or, you know, like a TV star or something like that, where um, they're lesser known, but they're not completely unknown. Like the one where it's like, I don't know their name, but I've seen their face before. Yeah. You know, if you can get them in there, then that's actually really, really good because they don't cost as much. But they will help you in the process of distribution, because when you take it to the streaming platforms, they'll be like, oh, that's a recognizable face. Yeah, let's let's give it a shot. And if you release on streaming platforms, then you actually are going to be put in front of so many households and people can typically make their money back faster with a streaming platform than having to put all the money out for the theaters um, if it's not that kind of, you know, hyped up movie that's going to be able to make its money back at the box, box office. Okay. And one other thing too, um, a lot of talk going on in podcasting right now about podcasters setting up their IMDB page mm-hmm. because you'll have guests come on your podcast that are, I've had movie stars on this show um, and then connecting my podcast to their IMDB right. and as a place where they've been featured. Right. 
any mm-hmm. thought around creating that early days as an author or a screenwriter to have an IMDb page set up? Um, yeah, you know, like I would say as soon as as soon as film is something that you're moving toward, okay. create. It. You okay. know, if if you're only in the book atmosphere right now, like then you don't necessarily need it. But as soon as you're starting to move in that direction, then get set up on IMDb. And here's, oh, here's another thing to keep in mind. Um, And so you may want an IMDb for this. If you want to have your book eventually, like the one you're working on, you want to be able to have it made into a movie. Titles, okay, for movies, you have to make sure that you reserve a title. Oh. Yeah, you cannot have the same title as another uh, No. Okay, yeah. And so I see in books, you can, books do sometimes. Oh, sure. the same title titles, multiple times, right? Titles for books can be very long, yeah. right? For uh, film, you're short, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, you can make it one word, that's great. Titanic. <laughs> so, Done. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. You know, or, or, or two or three. But the thing is, you want to keep it short, very concise. So if you go on IMDb and you have a title that you're working on for your book, you type it in the search bar. And if there's a movie that comes up with that title, I would suggest pick a different title and find a title. Yeah. Because if you want the movie to have the same title, you need to reserve that title. So if you do come up with a title that when you search for it, it's no longer, it's not being used. You want to create your IMDb account and you want to request that title and you can reserve that title and just put that your project is in development. Okay, because the development stage is where you're working on the script. And so even if you're just working on the book and you're not working on the script yet, if you reserve your title, then, you know, you will have that title available when you're ready Mm. to start working on your screenplay. It's like buying a domain, a www.com. Get that now. If you're thinking about it, just go get it. Buy it. Right, Right. You own it. Instead of finding out after you're all done your book and you're ready to go to the next step, you're like, Oh, that name's taken. You're like, oh, yeah. oh no, yeah. right? So, yeah. wow, that's a that's a great point. That was really good, Jacqueline. I love that. So that IMDb page is something you definitely need to put some thought into. Then, if mm-hmm. that's where you're headed, right? Yeah, yeah. When it comes to to film, it, especially for titles, um, yeah, you definitely need to reserve them. Sweet. Because it, maybe it's not being used today, but who knows if maybe a year from now or even six months from now, it could get snatched up and then it's no longer there. So if it's there, you want to grab it. And for just also um, for the IMDb account. Now, in order to reserve something, you have to have a pro account, but you can actually pay monthly for that, which means you can have pay for your your one month reserve whatever titles or whatever that you need to do. And then you can stop payment. Your um, account will just be there. Pardon me. Um, Your account will be there kind of just in stasis. And then you can come back and start it up again when you're ready to actually start working um, in the pro industry and start adding names and, you know, all that kind of stuff to your project. Nice. See Wow. See, okay. That's really, that was really good. I'm glad we kind of, I had, didn't even have that in my notes to go there, but that was great. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Um, so there's, there's a new workshop coming up um, to take your book towards making it into a movie. Can you talk a little bit? We don't have the date right at the moment, but can you talk a little bit about what this workshop's going to be for the participants? Yeah, I'm actually going to go through the whole process. I know I've kind of touched on certain points today, but I'm going to go through the whole process of having a book made into a movie and what the different options are, and then the things that you need to know with each of those options, Um, because that's going to help you to make the decision that you're going to be happy with in the end. Because if you go into something thinking like, okay, if my choice is to write it or to let someone else write it, well, I kind of have another book I want to work on. I don't know if I want to learn a whole new skill just so I can write this movie. Maybe I'll just let someone else do it. And maybe that's fine. But if get while you're getting into it, you realize that actually it's not playing out how you had thought. Like there are things you need to know going into that. Or on the other hand, if you're thinking like, well, what do I do if I've written the screenplay? Then how do I actually, you know, get it sold? And how do I know that I'm going to write it well? You know, like what... So all of these things that each side, there's so much to be able to um, 
that you need to understand in order to make a great decision that you're going to be happy with yeah. and not regret. So that's that's where I'm going with that class is just explain laying it all out there. And then, of course, if you want to go the route of um, just pitching directly to a producer and getting a, a different writer or whatever, like that's you you're happy to go do that. But if it happens to be that you want to learn to write it and you want to take our classes, then I'll also explain a little bit of what we cover during the 10 months and see if maybe that'll be a great fit for you. Amazing. So at the end of the 10 months, what am I walking away with after spending time with 10 months of you guys? Mm -hmm. You will actually have the third draft okay. of your screenplay. Oh. Okay. Because the, the first draft is um, is something that you definitely want to celebrate and be excited about, but you need to rewrite it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you've written a novel, obviously yeah. your first draft is something where you're like, oh, I did it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I need to redo it. Yeah, okay. I'll do it again. <laughs> so we'll get you to the point where you're actually finished your third draft. And um, included in the, the program is a, uh, a professional coverage service. So at the end, you, you're able to submit it to a professional services where they will give you what's called coverage, which means that they'll give you feedback on different elements of your script and give you a score. The score is one to 10 and anything that is a nine or above is basically ready to go to, to film. And it, you, so, you know, if you get that back and it's a six, you still have at least another one to two drafts to write before it's ready to pitch to a producer, but you're in control of the process. Yeah. And so if you get it back and you're at an eight, you're like, Oh, I'm so close. And probably the notes that are in there, the feedback that you've got yeah. is probably what you need to bump you up to the nine. So nice. it's incredibly useful feedback. And that particular coverage, when you go to pitch to a producer, um, you can show them that coverage so that they can see it's an industry standard rating so that they can see for themselves. Like an eight is actually something where it's like, okay, strongly consider this. Like this is worth looking at. Yeah. You know, it has all the things that it needs to have in order to be a successful film. Take a look at it. Nice. So, yeah, being able to take that to a producer is going to help the whole process of getting uh, it's called optioned, which let yeah. me just briefly explain how things work for making a sale um, with a screenplay. So first, a producer will option your screenplay, which means that they will purchase the rights to produce your screenplay, which means you've taken it off the table for anyone else. So any yep. other offers that come your way, you can't take them because this producer has paid you a certain amount of money in order to have the option to produce. And so you have a contract that's going to be a limited amount of time. So maybe it's one year, maybe it's two years. I think typically it's about two years because it takes time to get things rolling. You know, they have yep. to gather, um, all the team, the finances, everything like that in order to produce it. And so it's probably going to be a two-year contract. And you get paid money in order to take it off the market for two years. If at the end of two years, they have not gone into production and they're not within a very, you know, let's say a, a month or two of going into production, um, then you get your rights back and you can option it to somebody else. Or you can renew the contract and get paid out again for another option contract. Okay. Um, and so then when you actually have it bought from you, it's when it goes into production. So the day that they start filming, you're going to get paid out whatever was in your contract for the purchase price. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Sim similar to buying a house when you put an offer in on a house and it's off the market now and whatever and all that kind of process. It makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense a lot. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Okay. So on top of the course that's coming up um, in a few months, there's also um, you had an offer for some questions that you an author can use to determine if their book is going to be movie ready or movie worthy. And that's right. something that they can reach out to you and get those kind of guideline questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If you go to our website and just it doesn't even matter which page you're on. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a sign up for our newsletter form. And we only send out like one or two a month. Like we're not going to get all spammy or anything. But um, if you sign up for our newsletter, then when we announce our date for the uh, 
for this workshop, then uh, we'll be able to send you that information. But you can also contact us directly through the contact form and ask for, just say, I'm an author and I want to know um, if I can make my book into a movie. And then we can send you that uh, email that has the three questions that you need to strongly consider in order to know if it would work. Because not all books, like not all stories that are in books that work really well in books, work well on a movie yeah. screen. Right. Okay. They don't always translate. So you need to be able to consider these three things to know if yours will translate. Good. Is there any way to kind of sit down and kind of have this kind of conversation with you or somebody on your team in the early days while we're still kind of determining whether or not this is the way we should go? Is there a way to kind of have this conversation with you? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, well, if you have gone through those three questions, and you're thinking like, okay, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this. I still have some questions. Then you can contact me and we can do, um, you know, maybe like a 15 minute to half hour kind of conversation just to kind of go through your specific story and see like, can that uh, work? And is it a good idea? And uh, is it something even because here's the other thing. Uh, is it something that film audiences are looking for? Right. Because right now it's starting to kind of get back to normal but after the pandemic nobody wanted anything that was like a psychological thriller or anything dark nobody could get yeah. distribution on anything that was like that it was just too heavy and people needed something lighthearted to watch yeah right and yeah so stuff like that where i can be like okay so according to the industry and where th things are going trends and whatever uh what's selling um, this particular story that fits in this category, which is selling, or this particular story fits in this category, which at the moment isn't selling, but who knows if maybe in five years it would. So then it would at least kind of give you an understanding of like how much urgency you want to put into the project. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So and I see on your website, there's lots of resources at the bottom here um, for people to click through and check out. So a very healthy website for any author that's interested in wants to go through this. You've given us so much information, which is amazing. Um, I think we've already answered a lot of the questions that somebody might already have for you just by doing this today. And that's spectacular. Um, but is there anything that we haven't touched on that we would be missing if we closed off right now? And You're like, mm, we didn't really talk about this part. And I think it's really important for authors. Is there anything that we didn't touch on? Um, a minute ago, we were talking about contracts and selling stuff. And so I just wanted to um, maybe one last thing to say is how much does a screenwriter screenwriter make? Good. Okay, so it's going to be based on the budget of the film. So a screenwriter is going to make somewhere between one to three percent of the budgets uh, of the film's budget. Okay, so if the budget is one million dollars then the screenwriter or screenwriters, however many people are involved in that, are going to get 1% to 3%. And that's going to depend on whatever you negotiate in your contract. Okay. That's a good to have an idea of that. That's a, that's a number that most people are going to be concerned about for sure. Um, that's great. Uh, it's definitely so great to have you on here. And um, I again, I love the idea that you're focusing on family friendly. That is something we need more of right now. And I think we talked in our pre-chat that, you know, there's those movies where you're like, I don't want my kids to walk in in this moment because it's not mm -hmm. a good spot in the movie. And, you know, or looking over the shoulder of your children to make sure it's appropriate for them when you, you know, you, you can't be in the room with them at the, when they're watching. It's kind of nice to know that there's a, a group like yours that are creating family friendly content for for all of us to enjoy um, mm -hmm. without having to worry. So I, I really love the heart of what you're doing and you. uh you know it's 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 something to be proud of so thank you for doing this thank you yeah no I, it's it's a dream for me this is i'm living my dream <laughs> for it's real amazing despite yeah. the temperature you're living, oh, you're living a dream i, I am it. no this is part of my dream I, isn't it every writer's dream to move to mexico and just of be a course. writer <laughs> of course right yeah living my dream just without air conditioning at the moment without yeah see that needs to be that definitely needs to be in the budget and i know it's coming soon for you guys um can't wait for you to have that um again the website uh, familyfriendlyscreenwriting.com is the website 
We'll have all the links in the show notes as well. And where are you guys on social media where you're most active? Facebook. Facebook. Okay. So we'll have links for that as well in the show notes. Um, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. And I hope we can send many authors to you. I can think of many that have come on the show and their stories are amazing, um, whether they're fiction or nonfiction. And they're just amazing people. And I'd love to see them spend some time with you guys and take their, their writings to the next level. So hoping this opens many doors for you guys. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome. So yes, everyone, all the links are in the show notes. Please go and check that out and uh, reach out. And again, sign up for the newsletter. Hey, that's easy. You can go do that today. Uh, head over to the website and do that right away. Thanks, Jacqueline, for being part of the podcast. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Really appreciate you being here and being part of our podcast community. Livingthenextchapter.com is our website. I have a thing I would offer for you as an author, if you're listening, and you're wanting to build your website for your book. I've had so many authors come on and they're struggling in this area. I'd love to help you. All of the websites that I built for my different podcasts, I have experience and I'd love to help you and get you up and running. I can get you the help you with your domain purchase. I can help you with setting up your podcast, making it really simple. And if you love Canva, we can even set it up on Canva for you and you can do all your own maintenance. You don't need to hire anybody. We'll help you get set up. So if that interests you as an author and you want a website for your book, let me know. We can do this. I can help you. Livingthenextchapter.com is the website for the podcast. You can find me there. I'd love to help you reach out. Let me know if I can be of assistance in any way. And thank you again for listening to Living the Next Chapter. Today is where your book begins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. MindShift Power Podcast, the podcast for teenagers and those who work with them. There's a huge problem in America today. There's a very large disconnect between teenagers and the adults who work with them. I'm looking to bridge that gap with real, raw, honest conversation, not held back by the chains of political correctness. You cannot solve a problem you do not understand. Want to understand teenagers today? Listen to this podcast. This podcast is for teens in the U.S. and Canada. To learn more, go to FatimaBay.com slash podcast, or just look for MindShift Power Podcast on any listening platform. I look forward to you being a faithful listener.